In this video, I have a couple of examples of an independent t-test worked in R using the six-step procedure from the Nolan and Heinzen book, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences. So what we're going to do is work a couple of examples and type out all of the answers so that you can see how some one of these should be worked if you're in a class that uses that book. Uh, so the first example, I just made this up, it's baseball season, so we want to know if the American League or the National League has better pitching. And many people believe the National League has better pitching, um, because they do. And that would mean a lower score, though, in pitching, which um, is earned uh, ERA. So lower scores are better, so less hits off of you. Um, are they correct, these people that think the NL is better? Uh, IP less than 0.01. Okay. I put the data in the R file instead of importing it, just because it was a little quicker. So we'll open this R um, file in our studio and we're going to work example one and add to this file as we go. So we make it a little bigger. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load the data file. I purposely put an NA in here. Um, that is not a typo. So you can see what happens when you have unequal group sizes. And this is just one person different but it will affect your data set a little bit. And when you import these from like Excel, this will come up as NA as well. Now, these are two separate groups of people, so this is not really participant seven missing one score. Um, it's just that one group has more people than the other. We are going to do this data set in sort of wide format because um, it does make things a little easier for processing independent T, but you can put it in long format too, and that'll solve your little NA problem. Okay, so in working through this example, I'm going to start back here with PowerPoint. And let's enter, what is step one? Well, step one, remember, is about assumptions. So we want to know, do we meet the assumptions of an independent t-test? So is the dv scale? Uh, yes. I suppose it could be ratio and that no one ever makes a hit off of a pitcher. Um, it's not very likely, but it's still a ratio scale. Um, is the data, can we randomly select? Yeah we have access to all of the data. I feel like this has been a really weird semester where all the examples I make up we can randomly select because that's not actually normal. Um, but we could not randomly assign. Right? They are where they are. Uh, is it normal? Actually, it's pretty unlikely um, because uh, it might be sort of normal, but it's probably going to be skewed pretty much towards the low end or they're not going to make it career-wise, but we could say we don't know. Uh, and n is less than 30, so we can't assume that it's normal. Okay. And then the other one we talked about was homogeneity. And we're going to have to kind of put that one on hold because we don't have the standard deviations yet. So we'll come back to that. Now for step two, what we're going to do is define a research and a null hypothesis. The research hypothesis is we're going to put AL first, compare them to NL, and then AL compared to NL. If we look at step or this particular one, we expect that the NL should be better if we want to, let's do a directional test because the other examples I've provided are all non-directional. And that means their score should be lower. So we're actually going to say that they should have lower scores than the AL. So that makes this one automatically greater than or equal to to even them out because they do need to be opposites of each other. And note the order. So we're going to make sure we put AL always as first just so the subtraction's in the right direction. So our mean for group one here, which is AL, and our mean for group two, NL. Uh, let's calculate those in R. Over here, so I'm going to say mean one equals. Uh, oh, I should calculate them first. So let's do a summary of the data. The mean for the AL is 3.667. And the mean for the NL is 2.6.71. Um, you could also use the mean function. Uh, and just to show you how that would work, I could do that mean 1 equals mean. Wait, is it mean or average? I think it's mean. Let's go with that. Data dollar sign um, uh, AL okay. so let's make sure oh our data sets not formatted correctly sorry I'll add this to the example here there. now it looks right okay. 
So now when I start typing, it should pop up. Okay. Well, it's just mad at me because I called it data. But when you type that, you'll see how it says NA over here. Well, that's because it has an NA value in its uh, in its data column. So this is where I'm telling you, you're going to need to remember to do NA.RM. Okay. And now I should get that same 3.667. Okay. You can also type them manually like this. Either way. Um, two, let me show you both ways. Okay, now we don't have any NAs in the second column, but it doesn't hurt to type it. And then if you just type them by themselves, it'll output the answer for you so I can see what it is. So 3.67, 2.67. Okay, let's get our standard deviations. And you don't have to do both. Pick one. Stick with it. Um, that was just me showing you both options. So we're going to do standard deviation of data for AL and A.RM equals true, or we're going to get the same NA we had before. So there's 1.49, but we're going to save that as SD1. We're going to do SD2, do the same thing. And then if you want to print them out so they can write them down, it's SD1 is 1.49, SD2, 0.96. So 1.49, 0.96. Are those roughly equal? I say yeah. Okay, so back to this question. Sorry. Homogeneity, I say they're roughly equal. Okay, they being the standard deviation. Because this uh, homogeneity stands for equal variances. The n for each group. Okay, let's go check that out. So I purposely put it in a, so you would have to deal with this. So length equals data al. And so you'll look at n1 here. It says there are only seven items. Okay. Let's not actually write, because there's an na here. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're getting the right number in here which would be six. Okay, so we were talking about how the link would be six before my computer froze. Um, and so there's not actually an easy solution to that problem um, because the solutions all involve a bunch of um, functions that we haven't really covered. And so on this particular example, I would just tell you to be careful because it's really easy to import data that includes NA values. And so just watch what you're doing um, and on this one, I would just tell it n1 equals 6, okay. just because I know that there are only 6 of them. Um, so n2 here, though, we could use the length function. Uh, okay. um, because there, n2 does have 7 people in it. Alright, so we've got 6, whoop, whoop, whoop. six and 7. So that makes degrees of freedom n minus 1, 5, and 6. So that makes degrees of freedom total 11. Now what we're going to do is use that formula from class for s pooled and s difference. Because I have them all entered here, even if you do it manually, even if you type them all, you've like calculated them and you type them all in manually, um, by giving them all numbers where they pop up over here under values, I can just cut and paste this formula, run it, and get it to give me s pool, which is 1.23. It's a weighted average, so we went from 1.49 to 1. Uh, to 0.96. It weighted it slightly more towards the second group because it has more people. Okay. So this n minus one here um, would be six minus one, so that's five times the standard dv the variance uh, plus six times the variance. Okay, divided by uh, degrees of freedom total 11. So got 1.23. We're also going to copy this and run this thing. Remember that's the denominator for Cohen's D. And as difference is 0 0.69, which is S pooled over N. So uh, 1.23 squared over n plus 1.23 squared over 7 
so six and seven. Uh, add those up, take the square root. Now for step four, we're using a one-tailed greater than test. So we want to use QT to calculate the critical T value. 0.01 from the example. It's 11 degrees of freedom total and lower dot tail equals false because we want the positive one. So we did P less than 0.01. DF total was five plus six. Lower dot tail equals false because it's a greater than test. Let's plot that from here to over here. Okay. So it gives me 2.72. Okay. So critical T, rupees. Okay. It's positive because we wanted a positive test. Okay. So let's go back over here and look. I'm sorry, this part two, we want a positive test. It's a one tail test. Ooh, I just realized that was a typo less than or equal to, my fault. Um, and P less than 0.01 from here. That's, and then I'm getting the degrees of freedom from here. So 11 degrees of freedom. Because there are not 14 people, there are 13. And it's n minus one plus n minus one. For step five, let's calculate this by using the t dot test function. So we're going to do the first group that we did before, so AL. So whoever we did first up here, AL and then NL. L. Uh, paired equals false to get an independent t-test. Var dot equal equals true. So you're using the same type of math that we talked about in class. Conf dot level is 0.99 because we're using alpha of 0.01. And alternative equals greater for a greater than test. So that two sample test that it gives me here, pop that in over here. But the important part, oh, that copied terrible, but you get the idea here. There we go. All right, our means the same. Cool, our means are the same. Um, I got degrees of freedom as 11. Cool, did that right. Our t value is 1.45. So this is the important component here. Would I reject? t critical is 2.72. t found 1.45. No, I wouldn't reject. p is also not less than 0.01 on here. Okay, so in step six, I'm going to say, nope, fail to reject. Right now, it shows that the, that the two pitching leagues are equal. Now, what about confidence intervals? So if you're looking at the book, the confidence interval is of the mean difference. So we're going to calculate that. Okay. Now remember, the conf most confidence intervals are two-tailed. Okay. And so um, here, this is just a one-tailed interval. So I'm going to take this exact code, copy it, and just do two dots sided. Okay, be sure this is correct or you'll get the wrong confidence interval. And then here is the confidence interval of the mean difference. Okay. Um, and so that tells you that the zero is in the middle, and so we wouldn't reject. You can also use the confidence intervals from the effect size piece, but remember those are on each individual mean, which is a slightly different question than doing it on the mean difference. Last but not least, the effect size. So we're going to use my effect size code, but here's kind of a cheat. Um, so a cheat for T. If they give you mean one, mean two, and a standard error, you could do mean one minus mean two divided by S difference, because we have that saved. I got 1.45, so I did this piece correctly anyway. A cheat for CI would be mean one minus mean two, okay. plus 
the t critical value, but remember we're talking about two tailed intervals, so we're going to take that qt, everything we did up here, divided by two, because we want a two tailed confidence interval, times s difference. Okay, and that's why I've been saving them, so I can use it again, so I don't have to remember what the number is. So I got 3.12. Do the whole thing again. Do minus. It's 1.13, which is the two numbers we got here a second ago. So I would say that this copying the code and doing two dots sided is a little quicker. And then a cheat for effect size. Oops. Size. Eyes is mean one minus mean two divided by s pooled. So with our effect size code, we should get 0.81 here. So even though there's no significant difference, it's a large effect. So I would say there's probably a difference of pitching. We just didn't pull enough pitching data to figure it out. Now, if I wanted to do effect size for real, using our code we've done before. First I have to open my cheat sheet here. Run that whole thing. Do, 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 do. Okay, that ran pretty quickly. So we're gonna do d dot independent t. Okay. Mean one equals mean one. Mean two equals mean two. Okay. SD1 equals SD1, SD2 equals SD2. This gets a little repetitive, but that's okay, because we have them all saved. Alpha in this case is 0.01, K equals two. Okay. If you're wanting this code and you don't have it, uh, it can be found on our stats tools website, or you can send me an email. It gives me mean one, standard deviation for each mean. I got those correct. Woohoo! T uh, value. And so uh, that looks great. My D matches what I had before. And then here's the confidence interval for each mean separately, calculated based on the degrees of freedom for each group separately. All right. So that's kind of all the different ways that you can calculate these things. I Don't do all of them. Pick the one that makes the most sense to you that gets you the right answer. All right, let's not call this data because that's what's freaking it out. Let's call it data example two. And I'm gonna fix my issue. Here with the way that this code runs so I don't have the same problem. So one second. This is not something I expect you guys to know. I just was making up data on the fly. There we go. All right, so let's look at our second example here. Um, so a while back, our university was considering changing their mascot because uh, it wasn't ferocious enough, and this is a true story. So we had two different groups of students. We just cornered them in the, the student union and asked them, uh, here's a picture of the old mascot, rate it one to five on ferociousness. Uh, of preference. And here's a picture of the new mascot rated on one to five. These are different groups of people. So this is independent T. Um, it's very tempting. This is kind of a good setup for dependent T, but like didn't do that way because they didn't think ahead. Okay. We're gonna use P less than point of five and the data is in R. So before we even get there, what's step one? So remember this is assumptions. So is the DV scale? Well, yes, it's interval. Okay. It's not ratio because we have a true zero. Uh, is it normal? Uh, I don't have 30 people, so, and I'm not sure, so I don't know. And n is less than 30, so we can't assume. Um, random selection. Ooh, we would have access to the entire population, but not everyone goes to the student union, so I'd say probably not. But random assignment, we could randomly assign which mascot they rated. So I would say yes. Homogeneity we'll come back to in a second because we don't have the standard deviations yet. 
for step two, our research hypothesis. Ooh, I don't know. Let's go back and look. Uh, did they prefer our new mascot? So I'm on purpose going to do old versus new. You could do it the other way around. But so uh, I will have shown you an example of each type of test. So for preferring the new mascot, it's actually going to be a less than test in this setup. And then a greater than or equal to here. So I'm going to keep that order so that I get the right subtraction. For step three, oh, I meant to put in my little table. Let's go back and copy it. We'll fill in the right numbers here. So group one is old, group two is new. Let me clean this out real quick. Do, 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 do. Oop. Okay, there we go. So for our old group and new group, let's get the means. So, uh, I'm not going to do quite as much as I did in this last example. I'm just going to do the what I think is probably the simplest way to do everything. So let's do a summary of data experiment two. Mean one is uh, 3.667. Oh, mean one is for new. So I want mean one to be old. Because uh, that's how I set up my examples. So old is 2.778. That's totally not on purpose that it's 3.667 again. I really did make up two totally different data sets here, but mean 2 is 3.667. And I did that uh, because I wanted um, to show that new are greater than old, but the way I wrote it was old was first. So I'm just trying to make everything match. So old is first, so they're going to be mean one. Okay, so they are 2.67 versus, no, 2.78 versus 3.67. Um, as long as you make it all match consistently, you'll be fine. Let's get those standard deviations. Uh, let's do old first. equals SD data two new and then RM equals true. Okay, so let's see what they are. So SD1 is 0.97. SD2 is 1. Ooh, cool. They're almost perfectly the same. So for this example, yes, it's fine. Okay, so homogeneity is met because that's pretty equal. For in here, let's calculate those. Now I'm just going to click on the data set here and I'm going to see that there are no NAs. So I can trust that the length function is doing what it should. Old is first. Okay, so the in values are 9 and 9. So does that make degrees of freedom? 8 and 8. And then for S pooled and S difference, I'm going to copy from up here. Okay, you can pull it from your notes. Because I've entered all of the numbers in the same way. S pooled is 0.99. S difference is 0.46. Now for step four, we're doing a less than test. We're using P less than 0.05. Degrees of freedom total is eight plus eight equals 16. Okay, so that's from this slide, so eight plus eight here. And so what we're gonna do is use QT of 0.05, 18, lower dot tail equals true this time because I want a less than test. 18, oh my gosh, math, 16. So it's negative 1.75. 
Now in step five, I'm gonna calculate that t test. So let's do that over here. So we're gonna do t dot test in the same order. So data example two old first. Data example two new. Um, paired equals false because it's independent t. Var dot equal equals true. So we get the real t test formula. Conf level is 0.95, so it's one minus alpha. Alternative equals less. So here's what I got. Let's see if we did this correctly here in a second. All oh, right, it doesn't copyright. So T is 1.91. P is less than 0.05. The 95% confidence interval, that's a one tail test, and there are means. So our means look correct and they're in the right order. This is T that we're interested in. And so I would reject the null because it's bigger than 1.75 or more extreme, if you will. So we reject the null. For confidence interval, I'm gonna do a confidence interval of the mean difference. Come over here. I'm gonna copy this whole thing. Do greater. I'm sorry, greater. Two dot sided. And then pull just the confidence interval. Now T hasn't changed. What's changed is P. There's a confidence interval in mean, so negative 1.87 to 0.09. So in a two-tailed test, this would not be significant. But in a one-tailed test, it is. Okay, and there's power. And a good example of power for you. One-tailed tests have more power. Okay, you're more likely to reject the null. For effect size here, I'm actually going to copy this exact. Uh, now you could do the cheat formulas, but I'm going to copy my D independent T as well because um, I've typed all these in. Okay, I do want to change alpha to 0 0.05. Now that tells me my t is 1.91 which is what I got. Took six degrees of freedom and it's a large effect size. So here's 0 0.90. It is negative because of the order we subtracted the means. Um, but this would be the confidence interval of each mean by itself. Our standard deviations look the same, so it's just a good check for me to tell that I've done, I've typed things in at least remotely close. Um, and um, it gives me the effect size. Yeah. And that is two examples of dependent, I'm sorry, independent T worked with a six step procedure.